This is not a how-to or step-by-step -step guide. I'm not suggesting anyone else should build this or that it's something anyone else even needs, but maybe it'll get you thinking about modifying something to work better for you every day. I'll link all the parts below for anyone interested and you can make this really with any brand of desktop speaker, certainly any type of similar computer speaker. We're starting with these $20 Amazon Basics desktop speakers. They are USB powered, but get their audio from a 3.5 millimeter input. One of the first things I did after using these for a while was to swap the 3.5 millimeter for a Neutrik quarter inch TRS connector. This allows much easier connection to professional equipment, including the headphone bus of consoles or line level outputs from any piece of gear. There have been two small issues though still, and we're gonna tackle those today. They should be pretty easy to deal with. First is the pair of speakers being attached together. Second is that the LED power indicator is just too bright. As far as having the two connected, it's hard to get a good stereo image with speakers this small sitting on the desktop anyway, and the permanently attached cable between them doesn't make positioning them any easier. So I'd like to separate them and just go mono. Since I'll be connecting this to the headphone output of a small mixer most often, I'd like to sum the left and right channels at the input to the speaker's little amplifier. However, if you want to use it primarily with balanced inputs for like spot checking things uh, coming out of a mixing board or a snake head or whatever, skip this and just wire up the right input to the TRS connector since that feeds the speaker in this enclosure. So far, opening the speakers was easy. The output connections to the speakers were clearly labeled on the amplifier PCB, but glued in place. So desoldering their connectors from the underside was easiest. Now we've got the left speaker disconnected, we can set it out of the way. There are all sorts of ways you can deal with an LED light that's too bright, but another tool that I constantly use on the desk is this little continuity tester from Rapco, and that's all linked below. I took this one out of its box a while back to use that for another project and haven't replaced it since. These continuity testers are really handy to keep around. You don't have to turn them on or off and they run forever on the included button cell batteries. A lot of what I used to reach for a multimeter for was just the continuity tester, so it's great to have that tool at the ready all the time. If you don't have the $30 to $50 or more this Rapco model sells for though, you might just want to make your own. Luckily in these speakers we've got an LED we don't like, and all we need is a couple of binding post terminals and some test leads to turn that into a continuity tester. All in, it's just a few dollars in parts, and even making one from scratch without the speakers involved, it's about as simple a circuit as you can get. With these terminals separated, it looks like we can probably fit them in right next to the LED, which will make things easier too. It will also help to keep them mounted lower down, I think, so the weight of the test leads don't drag the speaker over when you pick them up or are using them. I'll mark those up roughly and we'll get them mounted. Now you might be inclined to use a drill here, but you really don't need one. Most plastics like this are easily cut if you go carefully with an X-Acto blade. Starting on the center point, just rotate the blade and it will cut in the clockwise turns. It'll just loosen the blade if you try to cut counterclockwise too, but it only takes a moment to bore a very clean and even hole this way. In this case, we need to get one terminal in and connected before the other so we have enough room to access everything. We're 
we're going to simply disconnect one side of the LED from the PCB here and we'll wire that to one terminal and then wire the other terminal back to the original spot on the PCB. Essentially just extending the leg of the LED and breaking it with our terminals and when we connect test leads and touch them together that leg is made whole again and the LED will work. Be sure to put the retaining nut on the back of your terminals before soldering here, or you will have to do all of this twice. Idiot. You'll almost always find one leg of the LED exposed and the other covered with heat shrink where a resistor is often added in line with these type of speaker designs. You'll want to use the exposed or negative leg, which would also be the shorter leg on a new LED if you're making this from scratch. With this first terminal connected, we can add a short wire to the PCB where we just desoldered the LED. Next, we bore our second hole with the X-Acto knife. And again, we'll fit the terminal in and secure it down before moving on. With that where we want it, we can solder the short wire from the PCB and we should be done. at this point that I realized I hadn't unplugged the USB power supply during any of this, but you should probably do that just to be safe. Time to stick some test leads in and sure enough, it works. I went ahead and soldered the speaker directly to the PCB as well, uh, since the connector wasn't very secure. Then I added some hot glue to the back side of the terminals for additional support and trimmed that out where it was stopping the case from closing. Then it all goes back together pretty quick. So that's it all done for now. Not bad for what it costs and you still have the second speaker to use as a passive test speaker in the future as well. And that can be really handy for testing amplifier outputs and things like that. So just a few budget friendly DIY tools and diagnostic tools that you can make however you like with whatever you've got on hand almost. Let me know if you've made anything like this in the past or what you'd do different to this one down in the comments below. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.